The new version, version 0.2 of the Godot OpenRPG is out and it brings a lot of improvements to the combat system, to the map as well, more than planned thanks to the seven contributors that we are now. This project is an RPG gameplay engine that we are building with Godot 3.1 Alpha 2 at the time of recording and the goal is to create a base that you can use to create solid RPGs. So it's more like a framework and an educational tool if you want. So we have grid-based movement with the ability for the various characters to follow the leader. If we move to that object up there, now we have conversations as well. There's going to be tutorials on that. We do have a mostly fully fledged combat system at this point. We have the foundations in place if you want. You have character stats, you have experience, you have the UI, the ability to select a monster, to attack it, to use skills, use mana, gain objects. We have an inventory system, lots of new things. I invite you to read the changelog and to keep watching the video to know more. The project is on GitHub. You can get it there, you can download it. You'll need Godot 3.1 Alpha 2 at the moment to run the project and not a more recent version. But uh, when Godot 3.1 comes out, we'll obviously update it to work with the latest stable version. We are on Discord to talk about the project, to add new features, etc. If you want to contribute, you are welcome artists, if you are a sound designer, you want to work with audio, you want to do development, everyone's welcome for that. So please join the server and come chat with us. Or on GitHub, you want to go to the issues tab where you will find a few open issues. And obviously you can suggest your own, you can report bugs that would be much welcome. Let us start with the map. So when you open the project in Godot for the first time, you will land on the game scene, this one. And this one has your character's party and the local map. The local map is the grid-based map system. And I'm going to open the scene in the editor so you can see. It uses two tile maps here, has a grid node that will automatically snap the characters to the map when they are moving. Now we have a node called the leader. This is your party's leader, the playable character. And the followers, right now, they're not generated from the actual party. They are kind of hard-coded because the map is the focus for the next version, right? Um, everything we did on the map, there's Big Dev who contributed. Uh, these are bonuses for this version. They were not planned at first. But you also have a dialogue system. So when you attach a dialogue node to one of the characters, you will fire a dialogue in the dialogue box, which is part of the interface now as well, that manages the flow of conversations with other characters. So we have that in place, more coming in the next version. Then the most important scene is not visible here, but it's the combat arena where all the combat action takes place. And there's going to be a video dedicated to how the combat system works in this version, like the higher level code structure, so you can get an overview of all of that. That, the spawn positions, we don't use at the moment, but we have a turn queue that manages the turns in which the battle unfolds. So you can use that to create any kind of turn-based game. At the moment, it is a Y salt node because what happens when the battle starts is the combat arena code is going to load some uh, battlers. So for example, we have a Godet here. It will load one of these nodes and place it under the turn queue and place it on one of the spawn positions here on the map. It will do that for all the characters in your party. There are two at the moment, Roby and Godet. Then you have the combat interface. So you have uh, the pop-up system that shows these numbers popping up over the characters. Then you have the select arrow that we use to select the characters. So this has been improved in this version. It doesn't work with multiple targets yet, but the code is now in place to support multiple targets. For example, if you want to use a skill on multiple enemies, we just didn't code the part that would duplicate the arrows, for example, Final Fantasy style, because we also need to add touch support and to think about it moving forward. Then you have a node that's going to create the life bars and mana bars. And this is also improved in this version. You have the two bars on the characters that pop below them based on something new as well. Let me open the 
battler anim scene, you will see that rectangle in the battler anim uses a new node that you can use to set the extents of the character. For example, if I open the Godet animation, at the moment there's only one body sprite and so we could use that to tell where we want to place the, the life bars, but there's a few issues with that which is that, for example, you can see the extents of my character, its bounding box is a bit smaller than the actual sprite because it's okay if the pop-up labels that come from the top of the character overlap a little bit with the hair. Sometimes you, you may have a special design that's not exactly square and you still want to place the bars here right centered under the character. So these rectangle extents allow us to do that. They are also future proof because when we'll start to animate the characters and break them down into lots of sprites, the rectangle extents will not change. So we use that to place the life bars and mana bars under the character, but also the pop-up label above the character. And you can also use it to check to find the edge in front of the character and have the monster come move in front of it to attack, which is hard-coded right now, but we're going to improve that in the future. Next up, we have the inventory system and a lot of things that come along with it. So you have the rewards panel that you can see on the combat interface. It's going to show the amount of experience you gained, but also the items that you obtained. For now, it's very old school style. It's going to display them with a timer one after the other, like in old school Final Fantasy games. But what's interesting about that is that it relies on our inventory system thanks to Nicholas. So if I go to the items folder, you have a few items there and a few scripts that define how items work. And items are resources that can edit in the inspector. So since the first version, we've taken some of the elements we had in the project and turned them from TSCN, scene files or nodes, into resources, into data. The interesting part about the resources is if I double click on any of them, they open on the right side of the screen in the inspector. We can edit the items here. So they have few properties now. It's mostly going to display some elements, help us display some elements on the interface. But they have an action slot that allows you to put in a script to link a script that's going to apply the item's effect on the character. So right now it's the bare bones system that we have, but the thing is we can already use it for rewards. So at the end of battles, monsters may drop potions or things like these. You will see that if you try the game. It all gets stored in the par party's inventory. So everything that has to do with the party in the game will be in the party folder. So you have the inventory here. At the moment, the inventory is created via script. It's instanced in the party node. So the inventory, there's going to be only one for the characters for now and holds the coins, the money the characters have. It also allows you to add and remove items. So uh, this is very similar to what I did in the Goddard course, where there's a chapter d dedicated to the inventory and an inventory menu. At the moment, we don't have user interface for it. We need to design items to create icons and to create the user interface, which will come a little later. We have other priorities. But on the programming side, the system is in place and it's working already. We even have pieces of equipment that do have slots. If I go back to the items and open the radar, which is the, the only piece of equipment we have, they can snap onto an equipment slot, weapon, armor, accessory, and obviously we can extend that in the future. We also have stat modifiers using a stats node. There's another area and system that saw a lot of improvements thanks to Mariano, the same guy who made the tileset editor in Godot 3.1. It's combat actions. If you go to the combat folder, which holds most of the combat system, down the battlers and action subfolders, you will find the attack and skill actions that we use for the characters. The point of these scripts that use a programming pattern called command is that they are flexible. You can, from the skill action, for example, you can create multiple skills in the game. The attack just defines the steps that a character will take to attack its target. Whether it's a playable character or a monster, it doesn't matter. 
This pattern, the command pattern, is a way to take an action, like a character that attacks another, and to turn it into an object that we can reuse, that we can store in a variable, that we can plug into the interface that is generic and that we can reuse to define every action in the game. We can make them undoable, for example, if you want to queue commands on multiple characters. This pattern allows you to do things like these. And typically, it has something like what we have here. It extends a base interface, a base node. So if we go to combat action, it does have uh, a few variables, for example, the icon that's going to be displayed during combat on the attack button. There's the description as well, and we use the name as a tooltip um, for the action. Then it just initializes in itself. It defines one method that we can reuse across all actions, having the character return to its start position. When we go to the attack script, the attack script overrides the execute method that the combat system is going to call when you want to attack the enemy. And so this one defines the steps the character takes. So uh, the character is going to move to its target and wait until the move animation is finished. Then we call the attack method to have it deal damage to the target, wait for one second and return to the start position and every action is defined like that. So for skills, it's the same thing. We can define variety of skills from one script, one action. So that's probably a little abstract, but we use that on the new circular menu. So these combat actions, for example, we use that base interface for our new circular menu and circular button. So I'm going to open circular button for now. These are buttons that will pop around the character in the game. If I open the script, the script for circular button to start with, when we create the button, you can just pass a combat action, whether it's attack, skills, whatever, anything we would add in the future, it doesn't matter. It's, the button is going to create itself to use the icon from the combat action. It's going to display as you'd expect on the screen. The good thing with that circular menu and that code is that it doesn't matter if uh, it's part of the combat system. Right now, it's called the action is called combat action, but we can change it to just call it action in the future and reuse it for the inventory to open a menu in the game, to pause the game, to uh, loot an item on the map. We can reuse the same circular menu on the game map. But that said, that's quite a few systems we've looked at. This should give you a really broad and rough overview of the systems that we have in this version. There's been lots of changes all at once, and there's going to be more improvements moving forward. Again, I invite you to come contribute to the project. One reason I'm making this video beyond pitching everything that we have is just so that on the things I showed you and that we haven't covered in tutorials yet, Please tell us in the comments what you would like us to cover. Very specific things, because um, as you can see, the system is quite complex. There are lots of parts. But for example, if you want us to show you how we created this circular menu and how it works, we can do that. We can explain the command pattern. Uh, I could make a video on that. Just tell us. Note that we have videos planned for the conversation system and for the quest system that's going to come in a future version. So we don't have a very precise roadmap as there are contributors coming to help and you never know what people are going to work on. But you can already see what our next milestones are. So the next one is motion dialogues, improving the map, setting up the, the map system, doing a, a tiny bit of level design. And you won't see too many issues, but you can see the plan on the milestone here. So grid-based movement, character follow, dialogue system, and the corresponding UI, interaction with NPCs, and some level prototyping. So there will be tutorials related to that as well. And the next one will be a simple quest system uh, that's also been requested as part of the last Kickstarter. And so there will be tutorials about that to get you started creating quests and seeing how we create that system. And all that this month, we're trying to do that 
quickly, but also to do a good job, obviously. Now, I think that's enough for this video. That's already quite a lot to cover. If you want to contribute, by all means, do so. So you can find a link to the GitHub repository in the video description. You can also find us on Discord and everyone is welcome. Developers, designers, artists in particular. I've made the art and all to create some base for the project, but uh, everyone is welcome to give us a hand to make the project better and go farther. I want to give a big shout out to the contributors who made this release possible. So you can thank everyone and uh, let's make the next one even better. There are going to be more tutorials coming from this project. If you have any questions about specific systems in this project or tutorials you would like us to cover on the channel, please tell us in the comments. That said, I want to thank you kindly, kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun and... We'll see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.